23, we're going to study out Jesus on the cross. Jesus on the cross, specifically his final words on the cross. And the title is The Message of the Cross. Amen. The Message of the Cross. You know, I thought about it. Um, when we're in intense times of pressure, anybody can relate to that recently? Yeah. Uh, intense times of yeah. trial. What comes out of our hearts? Luke 6, you don't have to turn there, but it says, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his or her heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his or her heart. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. When we're under pressure, and what we say, what we do, shows really who we are. You guys with me? Yeah. Uh, when I'm feeling a little bit pressed for time, and the kids are wanting dad's mm-hmm. attention, and we're running late, and we forgot something in the car, and I ought to need something, or there's a ministry phone call, or you guys don't know about, there's a family emergency. Um, I can be a little bit not like Jesus. You guys with me? Mm-hmm. And uh, sadly, my wife can attest. To the sinful side, where I'm impatient, I'm a little bit harsh, I'm a little bit on edge, right? What comes out of my heart is not necessarily good all the time. Mm. And that's why we need Jesus, amen, guys? Amen. <clears throat> I thought about it. Here's some famous examples of people um, on their deathbed. Some famous historical figures and some celebrities. What did they say? What was on their heart, right? Before they're going to die. And, and face judgment, whether they believe in judgment or not. This is what some of people said. I thought it was very interesting. What was in their heart? Noah Shadamas, um, he was a famous prognosticator that lived a few hundred years ago. He, he wrote, or excuse me, he said, quote, Tomorrow at sunrise, I shall no longer be here. And he was right. He literally predicted his, his, his death. Wow. The writer T.S. Eliot, he just whispered one word. He said, Valerie, mm. the name of his wife. Groucho Marx, famous comedian, like the Marx Brothers, he said, this is no way to live. So he was a comedian to the very end. That's mm-hmm. the point. Frank Sinatra, of course, old blue eyes. Mm-hmm. Frank Sinatra, he goes, I'm losing. I'm losing. George Harrison, right, former Beatle. It's a pretty amazing life in a worldly sense to be one of the four Beatles. Mm-hmm. He says, love one another. Wow. Love one another. Jack Daniel, right? The maker of the famous Jack Daniel whiskey. Oh. What did he say? He said, one last drink, please. Maybe. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? His life was all about alcohol, alcohol wow. right? Joan Crawford, she was a famous Hollywood actress a few generations ago. I think the 40s and 50s. I think she was married to uh, um, Paul. What's his name? Ah. Uh, Blue eyes. Not Robert Redford, Paul Newman. Paul Newman. She said, uh, this is intense, guys. When someone was praying next to her, um, she literally says, quote, don't you dare ask God to help me now. Mm. Whoa. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. Queen Elizabeth I, she said, 15 more minutes. Mm -hmm. Just give me 15 more minutes. And I'll close with this. There's a lot of them, but these are kind of the ones that hit me, struck me. Leonardo da Vinci, right? Mona Lisa. Um, he, he, in a sense, kind of invented the blueprint for a helicopter. And obviously a famous Renaissance painter, and sculptor, and everything. He wrote, this is, a, or excuse me, he says, quote, I have offended God and mankind because my work did not reach the quality that it should have. Wow. Arguably the most amazing, talented, well-known painter ever. Ever, ever, ever. And he said that. And he still felt like it was not good enough. Is that intense, guys? Um, 2019 is the year of boldness. And I can think of no fitting, more fitting lesson than a lesson about the cross. Jesus on the cross, that epitomizes boldness. There's nothing bolder than the cross. You guys with me? So we're going to take a look at um, the last seven sayings. The last seven phrases, utterances that Jesus had on the cross and what it means for our lives today. We're going to start in Luke 23, and we're going to kind of go in uh, chronological order here of Jesus on the cross. I think it'll be an amazing Bible study here. 
Coincidentally, seven is a number of perfection. Mm-hmm. I think it's totally God's timing and a spirit that there happened to be, not coincidentally, but in God's wisdom, seven saints, because seven is a number of perfection. All right, Luke 23, we'll pick it up here. What's the very first message for us? Verse 33. <clears throat> Luke 23, 33. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on the right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. All right, so our first message is the message of forgiveness. The message of forgiveness. That's why Jesus came. Right? So that we would have the opportunity to be forgiven of all of our sins. And I appreciate Lizzie sharing so vulnerably, so humbly. I think we can all relate to Lizzie, you know, having weeks like that where uh, I don't measure up, I'm not good enough. And that's the whole point. Yeah, we don't measure up, we're not good enough. We need forgiveness. Um, when I see this right off the bat, I'm very convicted. Um, I think about in some ways the relationship I have with my brother. I have one brother, one physical brother. Uh, he's my older brother. Uh, I live in. Um, I, I grew up in a hers, mine, and ours home. So I had a stepsister, I had a half sister, I had a full blood brother. You know, this is kind of a the all American, you know, family through just different divorces, and you know, we came together. But um, physically, he's my full blood brother, right? Um, because of my convictions in my life as a disciple, um, we disagree sharply what the Bible says about things in the Bible, and so he's basically just rejected me and, and excommunicated. He wants nothing to do with me. Um, you know, sadly, as we look at, the, at our wedding photos here behind Carol and Lizzie, or Carol and uh, Golda, um, my brother's not in that photo. Um, my two sisters are, of course, my, my parents, and before my wife, my wife's grandmother passed away, she happened to be there. It really was kind of a who's who in that special moment in time almost 10 years ago, June 27th. Uh, it'll be 10 years since June 27th in Portland, Oregon is where we got married. My brother wasn't there. And before the wedding, I had asked him uh, to be my best man out of, just to honor him. We were not very close at all. Mm-hmm. But I got discipled, hey, just honor him. Give him the opportunity to be just your best man, to be in the wedding party. I never heard from him. So I go, okay, let me just take it down a step. Can you be one of my groomsmen, right? Just so we have, just be in my wedding party. We be one of my groomsmen? I didn't even hear from him. Then I emailed him, will you just come to the wedding, please? Can you just, please just come? And then he finally emails me back and he goes, hey, no, I'm not going to come. You're not supportive of my views about different things. Uh, I don't agree, you know, with, with what you're doing. And just basically just a no, a rejection letter. Um, and so he never came to the wedding or so I thought. I, I learned a few years later that he actually did come. You know, obviously we're getting married. I don't see everyone who's there. He came at the very, you know, towards the very end. He left before the reception. So he actually did come. So amen. Mm-hmm. Um, but... <clears throat> I haven't really talked to him a lot since then. We're talking like 10 years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even with that, I'm grateful that I have brothers in the kingdom of God. I may not be close to him right now, but there's hope that he can become a disciple. Right. Yeah. And I'm grateful for brothers like uh, Jamel and Alex and Simon and Gabe. Um, and, of course, many, many others. Um, they're, they're brothers to me more than my brother right now because he's not a disciple yet. But the blood of Jesus bonds us in the kingdom of God. And even at the cross, Jesus is willing to forgive. And it was hard for me to forgive, you know, especially when you get, you know, when we get hurt. Isn't it challenging to forgive somebody? Mm-hmm. And God, and Jesus goes, God, they don't know what they're doing. Please forgive them. In my flesh, I'm like, they know absolutely what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You guys relate to that? Yeah. They know what they're doing. They're in sin. Don't you see it? They're, they're hurting me. They're, they're harming me. When I see my girls fighting, they know what they're doing, right? When they pick on each other. But yet, Jesus right here, of course, is a perfect example of every single <coughs> for us. And uh, it gives me hope that even at the cross, Jesus' brothers weren't yet disciples. Mm-hmm. Jesus had to rise from the dead to help James and Jude and others become disciples. Um, he had to go the full way to help them be saved. So, since there's seven sayings, we're going to have seven brief points. Um, the very first challenge, to close out this point, is there anyone you need to forgive? Mm-hmm. Is there anyone in this room you need to forgive? Mm-hmm. I hope you didn't take communion if there's still bitterness in your heart towards him or her. Mm-hmm. 
And I don't, I'm not saying that I feel like there is, but just, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to be God. You'll know in your heart if your conscience um, pricks you. But is there anyone in this room or outside of these walls, anyone in your family, um, anyone in the kingdom that you need to forgive? Um, do so today. It is a salvation issue. Amen? Amen. Jesus is willing to forgive. Let's imitate Jesus. So that was our very first message, the message of forgiveness. Let's go to Luke 23, our second saying here on the cross. Verse 39. We'll keep it going. Okay. And um, <clears throat> it gets a little bit more intense right here. In verse 39, it says, One of the criminals who hung there here hurled insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, you will be with me today in paradise. The second message is a message of salvation. Mm. The message of salvation. You know, reading the recent Good News email was just amazing. Um, I don't know if you guys read it. Please read it. Go over it. Review it. It's awesome. Here's just some quick highlights that, that hit my heart. In Manila, their Women's Day, Manila, Philippines, they had 601 women out. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, that, our church is a little bit over 900 in L.A., and they had like two-thirds of that at one Women's Day in Manila. Right? That's incredible. In L.A., to encourage you guys with L.A., around L.A., the regions... Ten women got baptized throughout all the L.A. Uh, women's Days. It's pretty awesome, right? Ten women baptisms. Auckland, New Zealand had their very first baptism um, right after the horrific shooting attack in Christchurch. You see that in the news? Yeah. Like 50, just horrific, just satanic. And yet, there is a bright light shining in Auckland, New Zealand. How cool is that, right? Yeah. Columbus International Christian Church, they send their love. Uh, the roads are here for the wedding, so they're in town. Um, and uh, they had a recent baptism of a young woman who, as a student at Ohio State University, she's from Beijing, China. And so it's just so cool, these college campuses that have international students that are getting converted. How cool is that, right? Mm -hmm. um, a sister in Atlanta who was struggling, feeling she hadn't been fruitful for a, for a long time, who's on the mission team, maybe we, we can relate, not been fruitful or not feeling fruitful. She's been already fruitful three times since the planting in Atlanta. They're preaching in the peach, amen? amen. Um, salvation is coming soon um, to a church near you. In 2019, we're going to plant Kathmandu, Nepal, which is the site of what? Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world. And so the Speckmans are going to be going there over the summer to help plant it and hand off the church, <coughs> perfect to Roger and Yasa Green uh, by the end of August. We're going to plant Indianapolis, Indiana, Johannesburg, South Africa, um, Kathmandu, uh, India, Cal or excuse me, uh, Calcutta, India, New Haven, Connecticut, which is close to Yale University, which is an Ivy League school where Chris Adams went. Reach out to some incredibly smart, wicked smart people there in, in uh, Connecticut. Amsterdam, Netherlands, and I've been there, guys, as a non-disciple. That place needs God. <laughs> Amsterdam, where everything is is legal and wide open. Every sin you can even even. You don't even think about saying they have it there in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. They need God. So um, I'm, I'm grateful that I didn't die there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's just, it, you know, anyway, lots of places need God. But we're going to plant a church and have a light shining in Amsterdam by the end of the year. How cool is that, guys? Mm -hmm. This is just a few quick highlights. We're bringing a message of salvation to a lost world. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus came. You know, I'm so proud of just uh, even in this room how we're preaching the message of salvation to those in our lives. You know, it was so cool. We had, um, you know, time with the Johnnies, and they've got brand new neighbors about a yeah, week or two yeah. in their complex, and already they've been reaching out to them in a powerful way. <coughs> um, going around the Westfield Culver City Mall uh, the past few weeks on Tuesdays, having Jamel come out to help Yay. us. That's been awesome. And um, we had our very first friend come out. And uh, it was just so cool. Already the Fleurys were reaching out to our friend Henry when we came to go sharing. Mm -hmm. And Henry came out, and then his friend Sirach from Ethiopia came out as he's walking to get dinner. And uh, I mentioned Ethiopia because what passage did we coincidentally study out at Bible Talk? Acts 8, the Ethiopian eunuch. 
He was, oh my gosh, no way. And Henry's like, oh yeah, you gotta be looking, like, we're reading the Ethiopian eunuch, and you're Ethiopian. And, and so I got his number, Sirach, and, um, and so I texted Sirach, we'd love to have you out next Tuesday. He goes, I'm there. I go, we'd love to even do this. How about we have dinner and a Bible study before we have Bible talk? How about we meet at 6.30? He goes, I'm there. So he set up to do a Bible study Tuesday at 6.30 in the food court. He'll join us for Bible talk, and uh, Henry's going to do a Bible study next Friday. Isn't that awesome? So just a little bit of changing it up. Tuesday at the mall. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's get together. Let's pray. Let's share our faith and just see what God does. And God answered in a great, great way. So I'm grateful for uh, even Jamel and Alicia leading up the Powerful Crimes of Glory Bible Talk. I mean, I see you guys are sharing, not just, you know, but like multiple times throughout the week. Uh, Our friend Diana is studying the Bible. Uh, Jessica was studying recently. Someone that Ashley reached out to and and we're all like, we're, everyone's getting it. It's group, it's group effort. It's not one person, but we're working together to bring the glory to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so our second challenge as we close this out is preach God's plan of salvation to anyone that God puts in your life. Really, anyone and everyone. Amen? But, but when we're preaching God's plan of salvation, mm-hmm. um, there is only one way to be saved. That's through Jesus Christ. John... 14, 6. You don't have to turn there, but, you know, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. People may not like that message if they don't believe in God or Jesus mm-hmm. in the Bible, but whether they like it or not, we still got to preach it. Amen? Mm-hmm. But it is hope to a dying world that there is a way to be saved. Amen? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Third saying, John 19. We'll keep it going here. The pressure intensifies. And yet, what comes out of Jesus every time is a heart for God and for other people. It's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. <clears throat> John 19, verse 25. Oh. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby. Now, what, that, that's John who wrote the Gospel of John. That, that's who he's talking about. It's a self-reference. The disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, John, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. The third message is the message of family. Amen? Amen. We're family. The message of family. And and even in in Jesus' intense suffering on the cross, he's literally hanging there. I can only imagine. It says that, the Bible says that, he was unrecognizable physically because they had beaten him so badly. Likely he's naked. They had taken off his tunic. It, it's an intense, um, just um, shocking thing to look at. And his mom is there. And yet through it all, through the, str- the little strength that he has, he's able to forge spiritual family together. He has his mom being taken care of with John and John with his mom. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Um, and so when I think about special missions and family that's in need, um, I think about this passage. And and isn't it true that we're going to do anything for family that's in need? Mm-hmm. If your mom or dad or your brother calls you, and uh, me and Jamel even have talks about family that needs something from Jamel, and, you know, Jamel's got a big heart. He doesn't guard his heart, you know, because they could have... Not the best motives <laughs> when they want something from him, but um, but they go to Jamal for a reason because he's cause he's a godly man. He's got a big heart to help yeah. the family, love him. Our hearts are moved by family to the point. So when I when I hear the mission's goal of seventy five percent by April or to bring it to completion in May, I want to get the job done. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I heard you know Simon talk about the Lagos church. They were missionaries in Lagos, Nigeria. Simon and Ashley, and the, the fearless leaders there, Andrew and Patrick, they came with their kids to a winter workshop, and their kids are the same age as our kids, um, Isaiah and uh, Naomi. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, guys, when you guys give missions, this is the guy that sends the money out to the world. Yeah. Um, so I personally can attest to the integrity of what we collect and how we disperse it with Kip and Kip's blessing and, and other input and the numbers that are decided upon. But it is very humbling and sobering to then send the money out to to meet the needs around the world. And so Andrew was just thanking me at a recent conference. He goes, no, bro, thank you. Because what I'm doing is not just a simple bank transaction. 
right? On paper it is, but when I said it, like I know it's helping a family get fed mm. in Lagos, Nigeria, yeah. or Sao Paulo, or Haiti, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, where they have nothing. And so when he was telling me that, and just saying, no, bro, thank you so much. Um, I was just brought to tears thinking about his son, um, Isaiah, mm -hmm. who's had health challenges there in Lagos, not in a first world situation. We don't have beautiful, they don't have beautiful Culver City with running water, and mm -hmm. electricity, and healthcare. It's a battle. And I thought about, what if that was my daughter, Amaya, yeah. getting sick all the time? I would want to make sure that I had family backing me up, making sure that I was taken care of. Mm -hmm. And so when I get the special missions, that's what I see. I see Andrew and Patrick preaching their guts out, raising their kids, having a blast. Um, I think about Blaze going to Port of Prince Haiti to, to help lead a conference there or whatnot. I mean, he's here in LA, but he flies down there to build up the group, raise up leaders. What we have here, like literally, they did not have this. This is just garbage instantly. We take a drink, we throw it away. They don't have this throughout Haiti. They don't have hospitals and roads and policemen. You know what I mean? People are like really dying in the streets. And yet we're able to give and, and help make disciples. Does that make sense? Like, this yeah. is family that we're yeah. taking care of. So our third challenge is protect and support our family around the world mm -hmm. by giving your missions. Mm -hmm. Your missions protects and supports family around the world. Amen? That's our third challenge. Let's go to uh, Matthew 27. You guys with me? Yeah. Matthew 27, our fourth saying here. All right, Matthew 27, we pick it up. Verse 45, from noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our fourth message is sin separates. Sin separates. You know, right here we see an intense time where this is not some random phenomenon, some random solar or lunar eclipse, right? This is your sin. Wow. This is my sin. And, and God allowed and made it dark in the middle of the day, in the middle of the Middle East. Um, it was complete darkness for three hours, right? It's almost noon right now, right? Can you imagine uh, this beautiful blue sky just becoming pitch black dark without any kind of a heads up? by the weather channel that it was a lunar or solar eclipse or whatever. I mean, this was God. This is Jesus dying on the cross for three hours. This is, this is our sin. Darkness that can be felt. So our sin separates us from God. Um, this is the very first time that Jesus and God are separated. For there, remember guys, Genesis 1-1? You know, in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. Jesus is right there with God, and he's there up until now. And now they're separated. Because of our sin. I felt this in a small, small way as a kid. Um, my dad and my mom were divorced. Uh, I saw him growing up very, very rarely. A couple times a year. He was a sports writer in Washington. Uh, he picked me up to hang out with me and cover a high school wrestling tournament. So I go with him and, you know, he did the best he could. And I love my dad. But he literally goes, okay, I'm going to go down here and do work. Um, you know, meet me over here. And it's a pretty big stadium. The Tacoma Dome is a decently sized stadium. Not like the Staples Center, but I mean, it's pretty good size. Enough to hold a big high school wrestling tournament for the state of Washington. <laughs> so, yeah, meet me over here. I'll be over here. I'll see you soon. Um, and so I, I, I get separated very quickly from my dad. Um, he's covering, he's taking photos, he's interviewing coaches and players and all that. Um, and so, I mean, I'm pretty young. I'm like 8, 9, 10 from what I remember. And it scared the bejesus out of me. I mean, I get freaked out. I'm crying. I'm waving. I don't know where he is. And so I go to, like, a ticket agent. She leaves her post um, selling tickets to help me look for my dad. Um, and so within about half an hour, luckily, we see him walking around doing his job. And he did the best he could. He's just taking his son to work. He's trying to do a two-for-one, you know, do his job, see his son for a week before he goes back home and 
you know, anyway, I don't hold it against him. But as a kid, it like it, it, the level of panic and fear, I can't even articulate. That's like one one trillionth of perhaps what Jesus felt in a very small way. The utter and terror, the abandonment, the forsakenness. That's what Jesus felt on the cross. Let's go to Isaiah 53. <clears throat> Come on, brother. And Jesus is willing to go through that pain to be right with you, to have a relationship with you. Lizzie referenced this in her um, communion. Isaiah 53, verse 4. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The punishment that brought us peace. So our, fifth, our fourth challenge is get broken by your sin. Yeah. Right? Let's get broken by whatever sin that perhaps is nagging or we've not repented of all the way or whatever is blocking us from being close to God or going deeper in our walk with God. Get broken by that sin. Let's be grateful for the what Jesus did on the cross. Amen? Okay. So that we can be close to God. Alright, let's go to our fifth saying here on the cross, John 19. Let's go back to John. John 19. John 19, verse 28. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, just John 19, verse 28, Jesus said, I am thirsty. I am thirsty. Um, the fifth message is a message of openness. The message of openness. Who here has needs? You shall be raising your hand, right? And right here we see Jesus in a very uh, humble way right here. This is his humanity right here. We don't have to turn there, but remember in John 4, when he says to the Samaritan woman, in verse 13, he goes, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So God humbled Jesus so that he was the well of eternal life, spiritually speaking, to now I am thirsty on the cross. He humbled to that extent. I realize it's from spiritual to physical, but the point is he humbled Jesus in a great way. Um... Are we open with our needs with one another? I think we are. Um, I appreciate Angelica uh, sharing her, her prayer requests for her health. Right? Alicia with her dad, Larry. Right? Uh, even in, in, in positive things, Alex got a raise. I don't know if you guys all knew that. Alex got a 24% raise at work. Um, so he may not be any financially anymore, but, um, but he's sharing his life as a point. He's being open, right? Uh, but even before then, hey, you know, hey guys, be praying for my my interviews that he had recently, my request to my boss, mm. and so let's use that chat, let's use these lines of communication to be open with our needs. Amen. Uh, Lone Ranger Christianity maybe is good for like a movie script or out in Hollywood, or but it never works. Trust me, it never works. Um, every single time that I've been prideful and insecure, not been open, not shared my sin, not share what I needed, it always um, it always goes bad. Please don't imitate that example. So the fifth challenge here is just be open with your needs. You know, you feel like they're small or inc inconsequential. On the cross, you go to say, I'm just thirsty. I'm thirsty. And so... There's a reason for that. Even what we think is mundane or inconsequential, Jesus gave us an example in every single way. Amen? Amen. All right, 6 saying, John 19, verse 30. Let's keep it going. You guys with me? Come on. All right, verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. <laughs> With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The sixth message is a message of completion. 
The message of completion. It is finished. This is from the Greek, tetelestio, which when translated, it is accomplished. I put before you guys, it is godly to finish our goals. Right? Remember on the third day, he, he goes, hey, I'm going to finish my goal, I'm going to raise from the dead. Jesus was, was there to finish what he had started. Go to the cross, on the third day be raised again. Um, what does God put in your life to finish? Maybe it's getting restored. Maybe it's studying the Bible, becoming a disciple. Maybe it's helping a family member become a disciple. Um, maybe it's something like with special missions contribution. Um, in a practical sense, uh, pray for me to finish my ICCM master's degree by next August. Um, I need your prayers. I need, 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 need your prayers to finish. I thought when I got my first master's degree, I'd be done with school forever. <laughs> um, I never want to do this again. Go to, in terms of going to grad school or school. But yet, God has me, and I'm grateful. I don't want to come across that I'm, I'm mad or have a bad attitude. Uh, at the time, I'm like, no. And then it's just funny how God works full circle in the kingdom. Um, things you thought you were done with, God puts it back in your life. Um, now with a wife and two kids and other responsibilities, um, I know the level of effort it takes to get a master's degree. And it's like, this is challenging. This is challenging. So uh, I do about a year and a half of pray. I know Simon's going to go back to school here in a few weeks. Pray for him. Um, that's a challenge. So we're going to be in this together, bro. Just going to school together. Different yeah. schools, but still in the same. You know, how do we handle, yeah. you know, life, wife, children, you know? Yeah. I don't know. So we'll have to, we'll talk, we'll talk more as, as that goes on. But be praying for us in school. Um, our house church being fruitful. Yeah. We're not here just to hang out and have fun. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And the food over there is really, really incredible. But we're here, guys, to... To bear fruit that will last. Yeah. Amen. And it is great to have Golda and Leon visiting today. Cool. And we're very, very honored to have you guys here. And um, and, and perfectly keep coming and, and, and join the family in a great way. We're very honored and grateful to be in your guys' lives. Um, but uh, but we're here with, obviously, their Bible talks with our house church to bear fruit that will last. Mm -hmm. And so let's bring this to completion. Amen. And it's, it's God's timing. Um, we, we plant, we water. God totally makes it grow. Yeah. Uh, but let's keep working together, and I know that we're already doing that. Thank you for the prayer request. Thank you for coming out to share your faith with us, Jamel. Working together, but, you know, I, I'll be jumping in with Jamel's Bible studies and vice versa. We're here helping one another. He's willing to come to our Bible studies. It's going to be awesome. So our sixth challenge is bring to completion being fruitful in 2019. Mm. Just bring it to completion. God. In his time, he will reveal all of that. Just stay in the vine, John 15. Mm -hmm. And it's God's timing. But in the meantime, we're free up to plant and water generously. And God will make it grow. But let's bring it to completion. Amen, guys? Oh, yeah. Amen. And God will totally bless us. Let's close out. Luke 23. Luke 23. Our final standing on the cross. And what we can learn from it. And I realize that there are seven points there, guys, seven challenges. Just pick one. Just go after, make it very, very simple. If you want to go after all seven, hey, amen, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. But to make it very simple and practical, just choose one area to go after of all seven, amen? amen. It's not meant to be overwhelming, but I felt like I had to just cover all the sayings and, and tie it to a point right here. We'll close out here, Luke 23, verse 44. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land, until three in the afternoon, for the sun had stopped shining. Mm -hmm. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The last point, the message of reunion. Mm -hmm. The message of reunion. Jesus is going to go back and see his dad. Mm -hmm. Even though he was separated, he knew he was going to go see his dad. Um, I never knew this, but Jesus literally is quoting Psalm 31, 5. You don't have to turn there. David wrote this psalm. He literally quotes, how fitting. Even when God has been separated from Jesus, what's left in Jesus, even though he's embodying sin, and your sin and my sin and the sin of the world, he quotes Bible. Because he was the word of God. 
And how fitting that he would, even with his final dying words, would quote Bible. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. And he knew he was going back to the Father. Do you know where you're going to go? Do you know where you're going? <clears throat> there was an intense story, I don't know if you guys saw, where a woman in South Carolina, a student, she's 21 years old, 2 a.m., I don't know if she was partying, but she was awake at 2 a.m. Amen. I just say that it was late at night. She got into a car that she thought was an Uber. Yeah. And um, she got murdered. <clears throat> she was found the next day. I mean, her friends picked up on it. Oh, my gosh. I haven't seen her at class. She, you know, I, don't, I haven't seen her on Facebook posting anything. And we, you know, obviously, we can't reach her on her phone. Um, they found her the next day about 90 miles away from the pickup point. Um, they arrested the gentleman because people had identified the car. Mm -hmm. She thought it was her Uber ride. And um, it was a gentleman that took her and, and eventually killed her and dumped her body in a field. I don't think she woke up that day thinking that that would happen. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. And I don't say this to be melodramatic or... Or to um, just to say that this this is a sick and dying and dark and broken world. Now God is our protection, so I'm not trying to fear monger or, or artificially make something there. But my point is like I, I don't. Well, one thought that came to mind was I don't know if she was ever reached out to. I don't know. You know what I mean? Well, my point is we wake up, we just don't know how much time we have. <laughs> um, but yet, if we're disciples. Um, if we're baptized, faithful disciples, we know where we're going, no matter what happens. Um, that is encouraging. Um, there's a famous photo of JFK picking his daughter up from school, and um, you know, at the height of his presidential powers in the early 1960s. And when he goes to pick up little Caroline Kennedy, she's probably three, four years old, and he kneels down, and this is the President of the United States, and so you see this photo of Caroline just running to hug her dad. And in that moment, it's not JFK, leader of the free world, the most powerful person in the world, president of the United States. That's just her dad. Mm -hmm. So even though God is clearly heavens and the earth and um, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-everything, when we go to heaven, he's our dad. It's not about roles or titles. We're just running home to embrace dad. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Yeah. There's even photos where little John John, JFK Jr. is playing underneath his dad's desk with his toys. And JFK's on his phone probably talking to a leader in Russia or hmm. Cuba or, you know, making an important decision. And his little son is just playing underneath his dad's desk. Mm -hmm. He was two years old when, when his father got assassinated. Mm -hmm. And so... Sometimes God can feel like a distant God. And when we sin, we feel like we blew it and it doesn't want us. And you know, God is waiting to embrace us when we make it. We just have to run the race marked out for us. And we'll be reunited with our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Amen? Amen. As we close out, let us never forget the message of the cross. And I pray that this becomes your message going forward. I encourage you to study these passages out. Um, they're amazing. There's seven different messages based on the heart of Jesus and what he did and how he did it. I pray that you go after one of them this week. The message of forgiveness, salvation, family around the world that we're going to take care of for special missions. Sin separates us. Let's be broken by the sin in our life and leave it. Let's have true repentance. The message of openness, even what we feel like is trivial needs, let's be open with that, with one another. The message of completion, we're here to complete the work that God has given us. And ultimately, it's all about the message of a great reunion for all of eternity with God and His family. Let's bring the message of the cross to every soul that's in our lives. But we have the opportunity in this generation to God be all the glory. Amen, guys? Amen. 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 Amen.